Welcome back to Men in the City. Today I am in Bogota, Colombia. So welcome to all of you to one of the more interesting places I've had the chance to be in some time. Indeed, one of the more dangerous countries I've been in in some time. So I wanted to do a little bit of a walk and talk with you today. So today's video is going to pick up on some themes that we've discussed earlier but I suppose with a more international flavor. So today's video is going to be called The Return of the Archaic, or if you like, The End of Materialism. Now, I recently watched a video from a guy named Andrew Henderson. He runs a show, a podcast, and a company. I believe it's called Nomad Capitalist. But he is part of a broader libertarian movement that consists of some interesting folks, people like George Gammon and others, for instance, who believe that the world is changing in line with a book that was written, I think, 20 years ago called The Sovereign Individual. Now, The Sovereign Individual basically argued that we were in a transition, sound familiar? But that we were moving away from an industrial age and into an information age, and that information age would disempower governments and it would empower individuals. Now I begin with that premise because I think that point of view is completely wrong and Andrew Henderson himself uh, has multiple passports. I believe he has in fact renounced his citizenship but I think I am actually uniquely positioned to talk about his perspective because you might think on some level that I would be sympathetic. Indeed, I do move in similar circles, certainly not the same as, as he does, but many of the folks that I commingle with, they have libertarian views. And I think most of you know that I certainly do not. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Henderson and George Gammon and many others who I agree with on many things believe that the West is irredeemably broken, or at least if it's not, it's in a suspended decline and can't possibly recover. I also do not agree with that, as you know. But they're missing what's happening in the world. And some of that is because they've created their own manufactured bubbles just outside the United States. And they're smart enough to recognize that some bad things are coming, no doubt. But their vision of, of the future as disentangled from the past is completely wrong in my view. And it's a view that has tremendous consensus in Anglo countries in particular, less so in European countries, but in Australia and the United States, in the UK and elsewhere in the Anglosphere. So many people are of the mindset that countries are breaking down, that the West may be falling, but what's not rising in its place our nation states. Well, I'm here to tell you I think that that's completely backwards. What's actually happening is a collapse of the material order. And I say that to you in part informed by the traveling that I've done. Colombia is the 30th country that I've been to. And what I observe, not just walking around as a, a solo entrepreneur and Anglo, if you will, but I, I say that because I learn a great deal and I listen a great deal when I travel. And I, I find that most Americans in particular are egregious travelers. They tend not to learn anything. They migrate from one bubble to the next. And I'm sure that a lot of other Europeans fall into that category, maybe travelers in general. But I find that Americans in particular suffer from this. And so people like Andrew Henderson, they leave the United States and they, they migrate to wealthier areas in Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia. Maybe they go to wealthier parts of cities in Croatia or Serbia. Wherever they are, they're interacting in a very, in a very narrow milieu okay. in which most of humanity will never experience. And so I think on some level, what that informs them to think is that, well, what they're living is actually the future. It's not. What is happening, as I've said before, is a transition. But that transition is not into an endless feedback loop of solipsistic materialism. 
It's actually a reconciliation with the past, the return of the archaic. This is something I wrote about recently in a Substack that I highly recommend all of you read. If you don't subscribe, I'll put a link below. But what's actually happening is a broader cyclical resurrection, I would say, of civilizations. In Colombia, for instance, almost half a millennia ago is when the Spanish conquistadors showed up and established a beachhead for their empire. Now, for most travelers that come here, and indeed, I would say, venture to other parts of former European colonial holdings, they miss that what's happening in Latin America, for instance, which is a very dangerous place if you're not prepared, if you don't speak the language well, if you don't really know what's going on, what's happening is a reversion back to the pre-Columbian order. And this is fascinating for me in part because when I was in Hong Kong, I saw, in effect, the end of the British Empire. I wasn't there for the, trans, the transfer of ownership of Hong Kong back to China. But what I did see is the last gasp of organic resistance to the reintegration of Hong Kong into China. I was there in 2019 for the protests. And as I say, many of the Western journalists who were there, they just didn't understand what was happening because they were looking at things through the prism of ideology, authoritarianism versus liberalism. That is not the right way to view the world. It's a delusional way of looking at the world. Civilizations of the past are resurrecting. Identity is coming back to the forefront. And it's happening for many reasons, but I think perhaps the most important is that this new materialistic age that we live in, uh, the, the age of Western capitalism, if you will, doesn't work. It doesn't work for the Western countries. It certainly does not work for the developing world, as they call it. I would simply say the non-Western world. And so what's happening is an increasing sense in the non-Western world that the West has lost its way. That materialism simply doesn't provide the path to self-actualization, doesn't offer the benefits of modernity that everybody's been promised. However, there is danger in that realization. And that's part of what Henderson and company are missing. And that is that as societies reawaken around the world, in Latin America, in the Middle East, in Eurasia, in East Asia, in South Asia, there's going to be a heightened sense of identity. I've talked about this as a form of radicalization. We're not entering into, as I say, an endless feedback loop of solipsistic materialism in which the individual just drowns himself um, in oblivion. That's not the way this is going to go. Faith is coming back. Hyper-identity, nationalism is surging to the front, and many countries in regions around the world that were quote-unquote dominated or absorbed into a broader empire, those Western empires are gone. And what's left of them is being absorbed. So it's a reversion, you might say, back to the beginning. But within that, there's danger because that shift in the balance of power is alarming the ideological lunatics that dominate the Western world who are trying to challenge this and maintain what, what they perceive to be a hold on the world that they never really had. In other words, their view is that democracy more or less triumphed over communism and that Western culture is this kind of irreversible trend that facilitates peoples and countries around the world towards modernity. Listen, folks, that is not true. On the one hand, as we know, we can see the decline in our own countries. But on the other hand, we're also getting a, a taste for the necessity for a new way, a new path. That's what I talk about when I mention neo-masculinity. As this transition proceeds and begins to pick up pace 
which is manifesting itself in these conflicts in Eastern Europe, in the Middle East, in various fault lines in Asia, there is danger. And there's danger because this tension between supposed modernity, Western style, and the rise or resurrection or recursion of civilization everywhere else in the world and the balance of power that's accompanying that is going to create real violence and danger. And one of the things that I learn when I travel and, and I'm acutely aware of wherever I go is that I'm not a part of the countries that I go to. This is again the problem with the sovereign individual ethos. There is no salvation to be found, as most of you know, in naked individualism. That's a bankrupt spiritual model. And it's compounded by the fact that when you're in other people's countries, especially non-Western ones, you lose touch with the, the community, the communalism, the sense of belonging. And you cannot compensate for that no matter where you go or no matter how much money you have. And the final point I'd like to make on this is that as we go through this transition, you're going to see, as I think we can bear witness as we speak, to the rise of strong men, a consolidation of power, a concentration of power in what we describe in the West as authoritarian governments, but it's less so that it's an attempt to stabilize an unstable world. And that's gonna happen in the West too. It's just gonna happen later, or it's gonna lag the rest of the world. Again, that's not to be feared, but there is a hint of danger wherever you go because there's a transition underway. So, hopefully that gave you some interesting things to think about. As you can see around me, Bogota is a, a sprawling city. It's the biggest city in Colombia. I think there's something like 12 million people who live here, but it is, on the edge of stability. It is a chaotic, fluid, dynamic place that can be very dangerous if you lose sight of where you are and what you're doing. So on that note, we're headed into a very different world, a world that's going to tap into a more spiritual, archaic sense of identity and reality. The old materialism of this faux Western culture that's fading quickly. Stay tuned for more, and we'll talk soon.